Wolf dudes was his right butt cheek. Oh shit. Brick dude, two crows. Oh, nope, nope, nope. He's got a friend. His. Oh, I hate that guy. That's a good chunk of people here. Come on. I need to remember to go talk to that little girl. I killed her daddy, her pappy. <laughs> First person, third person mode, Resident Evil. That's cool. I can live with that. Oh, you can't shoot! <laughs> that is great. from that birdie. I want it. I don't know what it is, but I never wanted more anything else. Oh, what are you? Be something good. Give me a weapon. Yeah, I'll take that. I didn't, I didn't take, oh, I did I? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> no, it doesn't, I'm sorry. Alright, let's wrecking ball this guy.
ass beat because I can't. <laughs> the fuck is that? Come on, you pasty son of a bitch. that Dark Souls 2 was too easy, then you're to blame for Bloodborne being so difficult. They call Bloodborne a brutal repost to the player base that thinks it's seen it all before. And from what I've played, I think I have to agree with them. When you pick this up on March 24th, you can't just expect to die. That's something everybody expects when they pick up a Souls game for the first time. No, this game is going to challenge the muscle memory that you've learned for the past six years, and it's going to punish you if you play the same way as you did in the last three Souls games. You're going to feel out of your depth, and I expect that you're going to have to adapt. I also expect that this is welcome news for most of you. So here's an example of something I guarantee you'll do at least once. You're going to accidentally heal yourself when you go to switch weapons. Uh, that's because they've changed two-handing from triangle to L1, the bastards. Triangle is now your dedicated healing button through which you'll accidentally and purposefully consume blood vials. And this action of healing is fast, just like every other thing in Bloodborne. You dodge faster, the enemies attack faster. Where the Souls games are deliberate and methodical, Bloodborne is frantic and dynamic. Gone are the days where you just hang back and respond to your enemy. In Bloodborne, you need to attack first, you need to stagger your enemy, and you need to be too fast for them to respond. So, to start with recent news, you guys should expect to be able to play with your mates a lot more easily in Bloodborne, because there's this new feature in the Watchword. Now, the Watchword is a so that you can connect more seamlessly with each other's worlds. And so you're probably thinking, oh hey, this new summoning mechanic, it makes the game so much easier. Well, don't worry, they found a way to balance it out. Because whenever you summon somebody in co-op, it also summons this bell maiden, and she's not friendly. When she appears, she'll ring her bell, and she'll summon an invader into the world. So whenever you invite somebody into your world to help you, you're also inviting invaders into your world to kill you. Just to even the playing field. I like this change a lot. There are even going to be areas where this bell maiden is forcing you to engage in PvP. So obviously, invaders have been confirmed too. And apart from this invader summoning mechanic, it seems like they work most of the in the Souls games. The invader in this picture is wielding a rapier that falls out into a pistol. And on that topic, we've seen a total of nine transformers in this map. Though someone can go to them if I'm wrong. There's that sword cleaver, which you all know. There's a sword that sheets into a great sword. The rapier gun that you just mentioned. There's also a whip that stacks up into a cane. There's the handheld scythe that attaches to a longer folding blade. There's the long axe that shortens into itself. There's the thin sword that snaps in half for dual building. And we have this one image of a character that's holding a sort of cleaver type weapon that clearly also doubles. When you start the game, it 
actually get to You also get to choose between two guns, the blunderbuss, which is that shot, or the pistol. Personally, I don't really mind what I start with, because I am gunning for whatever build lets me use that scythe. I call dibs on them. Simply due to the burden of design, I feel like there's going to be less weapons in the game, but there's so much depth to each weapon that whatever you use really defines your character and how you play, and most of you will be taking more damage in one more than any of the souls can This enemy's attack really fucking fast in this game. So players who play more cautiously will find themselves getting severely replenish some of your health whenever you take damage, just to minimize the impact that has. And running out of potions is a thing in this game, because as far as we know, you can only get more blood vials by finding them in the world. I so see a boss door over there. Oh, no, no, the use them too often. So, if you get hit until you fall uh, down, the church you that die, that well, there's this new element about? to the death mechanic. Enemies who kill you appear to absorb your souls, in this game, blood echoes. Whether this makes them stronger, we don't know, but it is a cool change. The enemy who took your blood echoes will have glowing eyes and an aura, meaning that you actually have to overcome the enemy that bested you, meaning that you have to do better than the last time you died. It's actually a works perfectly because it has the ability to just run back to where you die. You so where do you spend this? This area seems to function just like the Nexus did in Demon's Souls, featuring what I count to be a level of headstones And I say that it is separate from the rest of the game's world narrator refers to warping as returning to reality. Therefore, I think it's pretty safe to say that the dream is separate, a place that hunters go to rest and recuperate before adventuring out into the relevant parts of the world. And I'd also say that the areas that we warp to are part of one interconnected city, but that warping gives you a shortcut to a different checkpoint within the city. I think that this is the most logical thing to conclude based on the information we have. And within the hub, a few other things have been spotted. There's a fireplace where you can upgrade your weapon with bloodstones. There's a living doll with the same voice as the maiden in black from Demon Souls, who I would guess has the same purpose of leveling you up. Uh, she's asked the question, what do you desire? So that kind of speaks for herself to me. Let's finish on the story. This trailer is one of the only ones that isn't exclusive, actually. I managed to get a source file from Sony. So, here's Yana, the city we're dropped into. But there's an outside for yourself to begin. Easy, with a bit of young blood of your own. This is Lasefka, who appears in the opening cinematic of the game. He gives us our vague objective. Ring the bell of awakening was in Dark Souls. We have to unravel the mystery of Yarnum with the blood of the city to help us. But how does blood help us? Not makes us human, makes us more than human. 